You're listening to Comic Reflections, episode 167. I'm your host, Nicholas Prom. I'm Jeff Barnard, stool pigeon hippie. It's <laughs> <laughs> the worst. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Comic Reflections is brought to you by Rhymes with Geek. You can find our show, plus many other cool podcasts, like the all-new Anti-Fanboy, Feed It Comics, and Alpha City News at rhymeswithgeek.com. Comic Reflections is also available on BackIssueHeroes.com, the home of classic comics on the web. And if you enjoy our show, please subscribe to us on either iTunes or Stitcher. Okay. Yes. We've got a good show today. I hope so. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> As opposed to our regular shows, which are just <laughs> awful. <laughs> <laughs> um. The first book we're going to talk about today is an issue of 2001 A Space Odyssey. And this is number six. It's an odd place to come in. But um, this is great. The, the story is called Intergalactica, written and drawn by Jack Kirby, inked by Mike Royer. And uh, so it's the late 70s. Jack Kirby's back at Marvel Comics after his pretty awesome stint at DC, short-lived. Mm -hmm. But um, I should say his second stint at DC. But yeah, um, uh, yeah. Um, this is cool. Um, in the 70s, Marvel was doing those treasury editions, okay? Which we seems like we mention them almost every week. <laughs> um, and Marvel, with, uh, as, with Jack Kirby drawing, did uh, an adaptation of the movie, 2001 Space Odyssey. Odyssey. <laughs> um, and then they expanded it into, uh, you know, after they, they adapted the movie, and then let Kirby run wild... Um, expanding on the concept in this series. It ran 10 issues, um, and it notably introduced the character the Machine Man, who mm -hmm. later was one of the Avengers, and a very cool character. Um, but this is just bonkers. It's Kirby craziness, and it's loads of fun. Yeah. It's, um, we come upon our heroes, which we don't know from the original book. This is later on. I think. Yeah, it's they're Kirby. They're forty. It looks like. Yeah, they're they're cre these are characters are all created by Kirby. Yeah, one of them is Harvey Norton, who's a comic freak. Yay! And so, normally comic book fans are worthless, but here he's a hero. I love it that you don't see very often. It's not saying it never happens, but you never see comic book fans in comics. Yeah, and and these are the image. Oh, you look like you're from a comic book or something like sure, that. Sure, it's some. That's about, that's about it. Yeah, or where'd you get that idea from a comic book? Yeah. Bah, 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 you know, um, but uh, no, th this guy loves comics and he's an astronaut. Mm -hmm. So yay! So yeah, um, our first page here we see three um, big-headed aliens, and they got really big heads. Yeah, and they're on a on a view screen. Yeah, and our astronaut heroes from Earth—they're trying to communicate them, but with them, but can't. That is interesting. You don't see that much because it's really hard to write, or and it slows down a movie. But normally, you're not going to be able to speak to aliens because they speak a different language. Right. On Star Trek, they have the universal translators. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I, but you know, I don't blame them. It would suck having this, uh, you know. To, get a translator and translate it and just bog it down yeah so. it really would and and it's it's an important plot device that just to get things rolling mm -hmm. uh, another thing that um but this is interesting they do this so yeah and so they don't know these guys are mean or good or what they want and it kind of drives the story which is very interesting well well done I'm, yeah and i'm really impressed um another thing he has to do and the problem with 2001 is a black obelisk, which looks really cool on screen and, you know, it's mysterious and foreboding and yeah. all inspiring, but would look like nothing on a comic book page. So he draws little blue waves or something. Like yeah, that. to give it some de some definition or mm -hmm. something, because otherwise it just looks like a, a blob of black. Yeah, and you know he probably thought hard about this. Well, so. sure. Um to, it's to Kirby's eternal credit, you know, that he takes something that you would think wouldn't translate well to comics mm -hmm. and makes it work. Yeah. Oh, oh man, it's full of Kirby crackle and Kirby dots. Look at this. And Kirby uh, mechanics. Man, I love Kirby machines. They look cool. Yeah. Oh, man. 
This is a future what it should have been, not the crappy future we live in now. Man, you yeah. know how you always talk about when we, whenever we talk about the Legion of Superheroes, you always mentioned you love that future. Mm -hmm. You know that they that they live in. Would it have been amazing if if Kirby had done some Legion stuff? Ooh. Ooh, yeah. We think, just got the sweet spot of Legion and Kirby, like Jeff's two favorite things. Two yeah, of Jeff's favorite things. I don't know, it would have been too dangerous. My eyes would explode or something, <laughs> and my brain would melt. But, yeah, it's, um, yeah. Okay, so the spaceship, somehow they got a big-headed alien princess, and the other aliens, they figure out, want that pr princess. So, uh... And even though she has a big head, she's still beautiful. <laughs> Right. You know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, so um, Harvey. Harvey Norton, who's our our uh, our, yeah. our man on he the scene. He takes the princess out because they're getting attacked. The ship is about to blow up. So Harvey escapes with the princess to draw off the aliens. Yeah. And the other uh, astronaut thought he was a goofball, but now he's a hero. So um, Yeah. Big yeah. splash page of just outer space, cosmic crackling Kirby dots. It's awesome. Yeah. Of them just escaping. Mm hmm And it's so great. Yeah. Oh, here's another big splash page of... Of basically the same thing from a different angle. Yeah. They're arriving at her, like, city or someplace that's a safe haven for her. Mm-hmm. Did so, they go through, a, like, a wormhole, like in the movies, 2001, I think? Oh, uh, yeah. And, uh, they're being chased and chased again. And what happens at the end? They, they it's get weird. Away. They, they, he is confronted by the obelisk. Yeah. And made immortal or something. He's made to a star child. Yeah. Which, is that kind of immortal? And he becomes kind of a, like a god. Yeah, okay. So that'll work, right? Mm -hmm. Great scene of uh, the astronaut. Um, sprayed out. You know, he's, he's dying. Here's the obelisk. And, um, I don't know. I think she escapes. Yeah. And there's all kinds of mysteriousness. We don't really know anything about her, who why those people were after her. Yeah. And it's kind of cool that, because we couldn't understand what she's saying, Yeah, it makes it interesting. Well, and here's the thing. Our, our hero, Harvey Norton, he gets to also live in this fantasy world of his own where he, he is a superhero mm -hmm. in a futuristic world. It's awesome. He gets to live his dream. Yeah. Um, as he's becoming the star child. Yeah, but yeah, but is this a cosmic baby? Which is kind of be would not be my superhero <laughs> form. I would want to be. So, well, if he's a, does I'd it, rather be the thing than a, a big baby up in outer space. But what about? But wouldn't you like? Doesn't don't the cosmic child, the star child, don't they like become? Don't they grow into adulthood? I don't know. Okay, maybe it's different than other babies. I don't know. Yeah. But it's still cool. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is awesome. I really want to hunt down the other issues of this and the Treasury Edition and, and just and binge read them. Yeah. Um, looked at the letters and some. where are you going with this? <laughs> Please stop. I mean, people had no idea what Jack Kirby was going to do with this. You know, and I think it, some of those letters are like, oh, don't change the anything, you know. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the worst part of fandom is that they want everything to stay be static and you can't uh, allow for change or artistic license and I think that it's lame because stagnation is no good and why should everything have to be the same all the time but everything everybody is conservative about the things they love I guess but I think you know comics is a, such a wonderful medium you can do anything and why mm -hmm. should you be limited by uh, oh don't do that you know mm -hmm. super lame yeah um okay um yeah, but sometimes change for change's sake is not good. No, but if you have a good idea, run with it. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think that... I think if you're just like, well, we just need to change it just because, that's lousy. But if you have a and good idea... it's done a lot, especially in comics. Yeah. And I can understand why people are ticked off. And, yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, all right. Very good. That's uh, pretty cool. I didn't know what to expect. And my expectations were exceeded. No, it was really, really cool. Okay, here's another surprise. Alpha Flight is good. That was a yeah, um, we've got a Alpha Flight number 26, and the story is called If at First You Don't Succeed. It was written by John Byrne, um, penciled by John Byrne, and inked by Bob Wyacek. Um, 
the interesting thing about Alpha Flight, you know, John Byrne was one of the guys who really brought the X-Men from obscurity into, like, the top-selling book in comics, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, or one of them. And he was a, a big deal in the 1980s, and he took these characters, the Alpha Flight, that he had created as, as supporting characters in the X-Men, mm -hmm. and they got their own book, and he just got to run and do do what he what he wanted with this new property because it was not like you know something like oh no don't mess around with right. too much because mm -hmm. it's a totally new thing um, and he created this cool team of Canadian superheroes mm -hmm. you know in the 80s you know after he left the X-Men he did Alpha Flight and he also reinvented or you know revitalized uh, the Fantastic Four after a pretty stagnant decade the 70s mm -hmm. um, so yeah um, this is really cool the, the, the leader uh the Guardian has been killed and is miraculously brought back to life. Mm -hmm. we, we don't know what's going on here. Yeah, they're fighting these robots. Yeah. And um, they're doing pretty well. Okay, we have the Guardian. We have Aurora um, uh, Box, who is a, a crippled guy inside a robot suit. A shaman, and I can't remember who his daughter is, who has also got uh, mystical Native American powers. And uh, Puck. Who is a little guy who I don't understand quite what his his power set is. I think it has something to do with like kinetic energy or something, or it works kind of like Bouncing Boy, you know, <laughs> bouncing <laughs> off of stuff. Yeah. But Puck uh, is really cool. Yeah, he's Puckish. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, and hockey Puck in Canada, ha ha ha. Oh, I didn't even get that. Yeah, yeah. but um, but it works. Yeah. He's a fun character. Yeah. Um, it's interesting that the. Um, so they're Canadian, um, yeah. So um, they're fighting these robots that are kind of like transformers, mm -hmm. especially with during they the, do transform. Yeah, and during the course of the battle, they kind of unite like the Constructicons would become Devastator, mm -hmm. and they defeat the robot, the combined robot, uh, and then it's revealed that this was a test by the Canadian government or something to like right. see if these uh, these robots were uh, viable as a defense thing. Yeah, but we spent a good chunk of the issue thinking these were the, our villains. So that's an interesting kind of uh, thing too. Yeah, and robots are kind of they're kind of sassy and pretty cool. Yeah, but they also look kind of blocky like the Transformers did in the eighties. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's really cool. And I think it's it's a nice contrast to see them fighting against Box, who is this very lithe and very uh, uh, animate yeah. animated yeah. robot. Yeah, he's round and they're yeah. blocky. That's yeah, kind of an interesting contrast. Yeah. Oh, yeah, interesting, cool. So they find out that it's just a, no. We we find out they knew it was a test all along. Yeah, and um, they get um. Okay, then the mission comes up. Yeah, the, there's some super villains attacking the a mall. <laughs> They've taken over a mall in Edmonton, which yeah. is where they film SCTV. Oh, I loved SCTV. I do too. Yay! So yeah, so Alpha Alpha Flight or several members of Alpha Flight. Uh, head over to the Edmontville, Edmonton Mall. Not everybody, because I know. And then they do the Scooby Doo maneuver, which always fails, which is split up. <laughs> right? Yeah. And so they get picked off, be yeah. defeated one by one by members of Omega Flight, who are the supervillain uh, counterparts to Alpha Flight. There's Diamond Lil. Who beats up Puck. Yeah. And then there's um, Flashback. Yeah, and th that guy is interesting. He. Can, he can bring, bring duplicates of himself from various moments in time to kind of fight together, mm -hmm. which is interesting. And then uh, North Star gets beat by Wild Child, which <laughs> I can't believe. Yeah. Um, but he's all these people have help. I mean, yeah. So somebody is helping them out, but we don't see who. Yeah. Until which is very... interesting. Um, Heather, who is. Um, Mac, who is Guardian's wife, Heather Hudson, they're investigating stuff together. Yeah. And she's happy, you know, their husband's back, quote unquote, back from the dead. Actually, um, Guardian comes up to her and scares her. Right. They weren't together. Um, and uh, um, then he has a big reveal that he is. Um, let's see. What is. He's a robot. Um, yeah. Um, and he and Garden died. 
Guardian did die. And and so the, this resurrection they thought was really great and they, you know, it was mysterious. But it was all a ruse and it was this robot who was a member of Omega Flight. And that's the splash panel reveal at the end. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. You think they did it? What? Aren't they man and wife or boyfriend, girlfriend? That's his wife. Do you think that she had sex with the robot? Yeah. Maybe. Yeah, because, I don't know, that's kind of, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. it's possible. Oh, it's going to be, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's, and it's going to be happening pretty soon um, in, this, in our world. Fingers crossed. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, uh, <laughs> so yeah, what do you think of that? It's pretty cool. Yeah, it was. I was really impressed. I didn't... I think I've got some other issues of Alpha Flight lying around at my house if you'd like to borrow some. Yeah, that's okay. Um, <laughs> you liked it, but not enough to want to actually read more. No, I don't want to borrow anything. Okay. Uh, <laughs> okay. Let's see. Um, yeah, it was good. Uh, make fun of Canada. and Because the they're, they're so boring nice. And boring and all that stuff. But this is quite good. Um, did have a different feel or something. I uh, didn't notice something that is... I don't know if it's Canadian or just... Well, I think John Byrne is Canadian, or at least he lived a, 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 spent a lot of time living in Canada. And so, I don't know, maybe it just feels genuine? Maybe. Like he got the, the, the kind of character beats of how Canadian folks are and mm-hmm. character types, you yeah. know? I mean, and he was such a powerhouse in the 80s because not only was he probably like the number one artist in comics... Mm-hmm. On the scene, you know, well, him and George Perez were like the the two biggest artists in the eighties. Yeah. Um, but he was a double threat because he was an excellent comics writer. You know, so mm-hmm. John Byrne was great. Yeah. Still, I mean, he's still around. It's, mm-hmm. Not like he's dead, but um, but anyway, do we want to move into onto our next book? Yeah, his brother's keeper. Yeah, um, from Amazing Adventures number five, a brother's keeper is the lead. The lead story, and it's and it, this is kind of a, a lead feature, co-feature kind of book, like Marvel did in the 60s. Mm-hmm. Um, and this is about uh, the Inhumans, and uh, who are going to have their own movie for, uh, in just a few years. Oh. Yeah. Hmm. Um, hmm. Yeah. that will be interesting. But speaking of powerhouse creative teams, this was written by Roy Thomas, penciled by Neil Adams, who I've met and who is a god of comics, mm-hmm. um, and inked by Tom Palmer, who is uh, excellent. He's a very, uh, I think Tom Palmer's uh, one of those great inkers who is kind of Wally Wood esque, but also like his inks don't they complement the penciler very well. It looks as if uh, Neil Adams inked his own stuff. It's great. Yeah, it, yeah, everything here is really really cool. Um, so well what's, done. What's going on with the Inhumans? Black Bolt goes in New York City, and we don't know why. I have no idea. Well, at, very, mission. at various points, the Inhumans are kind of, they want to see if they want to leave, uh, I think it's at this yeah. time, the, the Hidden some City. some kind of mission that cannot wait. Yeah. That's the impression I got. Yeah. All right. So they leave behind Medusa and um, Karnak, the and, Stomper. Or whatever. Karnak the, is, is a little guy. And then this Gorgon, the Stomper. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> kind of like the shatter. Okay, yeah, okay. you made up the stomper part. I don't think anybody calls Gorgon, Gorgon the stomper. Yeah, man, but I like does. it. That's what he. You're right. That is what he does. Um, yeah. Um. And and Maximus the Mad, who is kind of the the he's a member of the royal family with them, but also he's like their villain too. He's yeah. Black Bolt's cousin or brother or something. I think he's brother, and um, he's in this weird uh coffin that's keeping him like in a coma but and it's it, also about to kill him yeah it's and weird so karnak and gorgon say hey we need to free him because if we don't free him he'll die and that means uh black bolt will go against his oath never to kill anybody mm, okay so they free him and uh, but first we go to new york city where this little kid is he's sent to break into a building and he doesn't against his will mm-hmm. and black bolt stumbles across this and beats him up yay the bad guys the bad guys oh crummy did you see this yes 
Uh, Star Trek Collection, Marvel Artist Self-Portraits. I would love to have these. These are so awesomely cool. Yeah, this is one of the, kind of one of those, like, in the 70s, there was also kind of an idea of, like, hey, let's put out these portfolios uh, uh, and, and fun things of the artists. They've got John Bushima and I think Jim Steranko as well. Colin. Gene Colin. Colin. Gene Colin. And, and, um, Kirby, of course. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And who else do we have? Oh, John Romita. Yeah. Herb Trimpey. Yeah, it's great. All the, the, the big stars of Marvel, uh, certainly at the time. We're missing one. Oh, okay. Yeah, Storinko's right there. Yeah. Man, Storinko, he just did himself. Everyone else did the characters. And <laughs> I think they can include both. The portfolio itself can include self-portraits and character oh, art. I thought just about six things here. And then, oh, but is there more? I don't know. I would love to see I, these in real life, though. These, these yeah. look cool. All right. Yeah, so... As opposed to the free giant life-size moon monster. <laughs> <laughs> it's another, you know, classic comic book guy. But anyway, uh, uh, Black Bolt. Yeah, he just kicks some butt. And um, but back in, in human land, <laughs> <laughs> they try and try and try and open the coffin or whatever it is. And um, it opens and they found out that uh, Maximus has a superpower of... Uh, I don't know. He can control people, and but he makes Black Bolt lose his memory. And the problem with Black Bolt is that he can never forget not to speak because his voice is, is has this immense destructive power. Mm -hmm. And I read a uh, like a Silver Surfer story where he just showed up, and Surfer was fighting somebody on the moon. Mm -hmm. I think that's right. And Black Bolt showed up and just whispered, "Stop!" And it just created this immense earth shattering effect it was mm -hmm. you know intense yeah okay to all a good night with the black widow yeah and this is great too uh roy thomas wrote this also um and uh gene colin penciled it and bill everett inking hmm. um bill everett of course the artist great artist of the golden age and had a wonderful revival uh in the late silver age early bronze age before his untimely death um Great to see him, uh, one of the greats, inking another one of the greats. Yeah. I, I, I would liken it almost to like uh, when Wally Wood would ink Kirby, on mm -hmm. like on the Challenges of the Unknown. It's great just to see it together. Um, Gene Colan, I have a big fondness for. Um, and this is cool. It's cool to see the Black Widow in solo action. Yeah. Um, we see a guy who, a dirty, filthy hippie, trying to commit suicide. And a Black Widow sh chauffeur stops him doing it, which I think is a bad thing. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> right. uh, I like picking on hippies because they used to kind of be one, I suppose. Um, it shows a, a picture of a Black Widow, but it looks like a beetle to me. So don't they know how to draw a Black Widow? Look at uh, that. That's, that's, that looks like a beetle. Ah, uh, yeah. what can you do? Nothing's perfect. You know... I a big fan of, I am of Gene Colan. Mm -hmm. There are limits to his art. I mean, like, uh, like I've read, I there's like Daredevil stories where he fights Electro, and Gene Colan, as even though he's one of my favorites, he draws Electro's mask just wrong. It looks awful. Hmm. Okay. You know, so everyone has limitations. All right. Okay. So Black Widow chauffeur. Who the devil is he? I don't. I forgot his name. But he's driving a Rolls Royce, and he takes the, um, the hippie to um, Black Widow's place. Um, he uses a cell phone, which is, and this is interesting. The cell phone is smaller than our cell phones. Interesting. And you know, usually they're massive. You know, well, and cell handy. phone was a still a science fiction kind of thing uh, in this time. It's like remember the Star Trek communicators? Mm -hmm. Those were small. Yeah. You know. Yeah. I always want to to. It's about the size of your any key or something. There's <laughs> got to be somebody who can make a custom, like, it looks like the Star Trek communicator, and that's the cell phone. Yeah. So. I, I just settle for the sound. But, uh, yeah. Uh, okay. I think I've already had that, then. Um, <laughs> yeah, and then got rid of it because it anno got annoying. <laughs> All right, so we find Black Widow in the shower. Wow. But, uh, <laughs> and, and I feel like... That happened a lot in Daredevil, too. They just find ways to, like, do that scene. But, I mean, again, what do you do with a female superhero? And 
You make sure she's clean. That's what you do. Yeah, I guess. Or especially she lives alone, that kind of thing. Yeah. I just think it's a, a thing you do when it's in downtime. Oh, why not just have her in the shower? Yeah, you know? it's also fan service, too. So. Yeah. All right. Uh, she does look good in her jumpsuit. Yes, and it's the Emma Peel jumpsuit, which is really uh, an improvement on her Silver Age costume, which was lame with the cape and the, the silly mask. You've mm -hmm. seen that. Yeah. Um, but this is her classic costume, and it's terrific. Okay, so um, we get the dirty hippie comes up to the to the apartment. Um, he tells a story that he came to the city to get find a job, and he basically ended up joining a crime cult. Yeah, with the astrologer. <laughs> and, oh, man. It's just, yeah. Astrology, the lamest of the New Age stuff, I think. <laughs> yeah. Well, and it's odd because it's the oldest of the New Age. It's the most ancient New Age thing. Think about it. Maybe, maybe not. Anyway. I have to think about that. Um, yeah, okay, so... We, the astrologer gets his, these guys together and they s steal stuff. And now he's going <laughs> to steal from a blood bank. And the hippie says, has an attack of conscience to say, Hey, man, people need that blood, yo. Yeah, what an odd thing to do. <laughs> sort of, I have never heard that. They want to ransom the blood from the blood bank? I don't know if that's a very good plan at yeah. all. Yeah, because... Because if you steal a robbery, you can pawn stuff, and then, like, how do they trace you? You steal the blood, like, okay, this is a mo big move, but, like, you get caught with the blood, it's like, duh, you're caught red-handed, but, um, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, uh, plus, the blood has to be kept refrigerated. Yeah, you know, you it seems like a lot of work for a plan that might not uh, pan out. Yeah, yeah, and it's... Uh, yeah, like what if the blood bank says, well, okay, see yeah. you later. I, mean, I guess it's impossible for them to call another city and, and order some more. You know, it's, it's not like it's, you can only use blood from, whatever, Central yeah. City or... And the fact York. that, yes, it definitely has an expiration date. Yeah. Dumb. Dumb. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But anyway. Oh, man. All right. That's why they call it dope. <laughs> All right, so... Unbeknownst to Black Widow, the hippie was followed by the astrologer guys. And so they come up, and there's a huge fight. And it's pretty cool. Um, I don't know. Really, her, she has a Russian uh, emigre. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, has a chauffeur, and he fights like crazy, too. He, entertaining. I, I really enjoyed this. And yeah. So, she's about to die because one of the minions has the got hero. her like on the ledge of a thing, and, and then the, the, the hippie saves her and falls to his death. Yeah. And then she spends the rest of the issue sad, mm -hmm. or the rest of the page, because that's it. Yeah. Well, that's pretty cool. I'd like to see more. I want to know what happens. Yeah. All right. So the next book and last for this uh, episode. Um, Oh, it's a treat, and it's the beginning of a, a, a cycle that we're going to go through for a while, and and, a, and I know Jeff's going to be happy, and I am too. It's The Amazing Spider-Man, number 48. It's the May 1967 issue, and the story is called The Wings of the Vulture, written by Stan Lee, with art by John Romita. Yeah, um, the vulture is interesting. One thing that... He's an old guy. He's a, he's a right. senior citizen supervillain. Yeah, which is cool. Um, and he's kind of active. His flying ability is kind of lame. I don't know. Hey, I can fly. I'm not, I can be beaten. Yeah. Oh, I don't know about that. He, but, he does have a certain distinction, though. He was the first recurring Spider-Man villain, first of all. And he was and, and he was brought back by popular demand. Letters demanded the return of the Vulture. He was in, like, Amazing Spider-Man number three... Hmm. And then, like, again in, like, number six or something. Like, he really uh, was very popular right away. Mm -hmm. um, and, yeah, okay, he's kind of lame, but Spider-Man fighting a guy in the no, air. He's not lame. His, um, I think, it is his superpower. Flying? It's kind of lame. Yeah. Because how many superheroes fly? And, and they do a lot more than that. Yeah. 
Um, but a guy with wings, it's visually, it looks cool, and, you know, I think this is kind of like the prototype for the flying aerial kind of dogfight, Spidey swinging from, you know, stuff and fighting a guy in the air, like you would see so much with the Green Goblin, who yeah. is like neck and neck with Doc Ock as his like most popular villain, yeah. classic oh, villain. Yeah, don't get me wrong, I love the Vulture. He's yeah. really, really cool. Oh, yeah. So, but, um, why don't I... <laughs> he just that's just odd it's yeah super fun. all right so blackie drago um is a cellmate of adrian tombs mm -hmm. the vulture and they're both in prison the vulture's uh, dying right so he calls him black he says, oh, i'll tell you where my wings are and then uh, he tells him and then black he says aha i made you sick and die ha ha now i got the wings ah. so yeah. he monologues <laughs> yeah and so he escapes and gets the wings and the vulture the original vulture He's pissed. He's been betrayed. Blackie caused an accident in the machine shop. And that's mm -hmm. why uh, Adrian yeah. Toomes is dying. Mm -hmm. So but Blackie does get out, and it's snowing, by the way. Yeah. Which is also cool. And it's kind of important to the rest of the yeah. issue. So he finds the wings. They're really close to the prison. They're fights inside off. the prison on uh, compound. Not in the walls of the prison, but in the side, you know, the yard. Yeah. The outside of the yeah. field. All right, and so he figures out how to fly and all that stuff. Yeah. So Blackie Drago, um, he goes on a new crime spree as the new vulture. And Peter Parker hears about this new vulture on La News Bulletin or sees yeah. it on television. He's like, ah, oh, crap. And now and he's, he's sick. Yeah, he's spidey is sick. Not Aunt May, but him. <laughs> yeah. And so interesting things. He's like, ah, oh, crap. He just got done with a fight with Craven the Hunter, too, who mm -hmm. is still on the loose. Right. And... That'll come into play later. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, he's thinking like, crap, i got to fight a new vulture. This guy's probably young and more and stronger than the original vulture. Right. Which is true, but he also doesn't have as much experience with the wings and using the power. So that's also something to Spidey's advantage. Mm -hmm. Hey, we see Gwen. And um, she doesn't look good here. I don't know. No? They change her hair, and then Harry says... Yeah, it looks like more like Mary Jane's hair. It's like, it's, yeah. Oh, God. Yeah, mm -hmm. the soap opera of Peter's life is very interesting in this time. Mm -hmm. um, and, of course, well, I'm sure we'll be talking about those subplots as we go along. Um, yeah. Okay, so let's see. Oh, and Blackie Drago creates a helmet also to mm -hmm. distinguish himself from the old vulture. Yeah. It's interesting. On the classic Spider-Man cartoon show from the 60s, mm -hmm. It was the Blackie Drago vulture that was on that show, not Adrian Toomes. Interesting. It's the vulture with this helmet. And this helmet, I think he at some point uses to control birds. Oh. <laughs> eventually. Okay. I know, I remember he did it on the cartoon. Yeah. I don't know if that's true to the comics. But Blackie Drago was the vulture for a while, so. Yeah. All right, so Blackie Drago goes around robbing people. And he's something like stealing somebody's well let's see he swoops down and steals payrolls from, from yeah, people that's about it yeah you know different things like that he's i think there's a point where he steals something from a helicopter flying that's cool yeah um and he says nobody can beat a man with wings you know yeah. and I, that's what, what i remember a line they totally used in the cartoon <laughs> nobody can beat a man with wings you know i can do yeah. anything i'm like really yeah, what if, you know, he, if he meets, you know, someone who shoots skeet, you know, and he's, he's SOL. So. Right. I mean, it's being able to fly. That's a good power. You have things you can do, but there are a lot of limitations also. Yeah. You can't carry that much stuff because you need to be able to flap those stupid wings. And you got to be in the open. You can't do a mall or something. Yeah. I mean... Uh, or you got to watch out for power lines. Yeah. What oh. if, you, if you go into a building in an enclosed space, you're screwed. Um, because yeah. it's not like he's invulnerable. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, kids with uh, slingshots, you know, are your arch foe. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Blackie Drago is a schemer, but he's not a brilliant guy. Yeah. Um, so his plans are going to be fairly limited, fairly... Uh, he thinks he's big time now, but they are kind of still petty crime. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I mean, he's doing grand yeah. larceny, but you know what I mean? He's not taking over the world. Right. Um, Spider-Man is really sick. He's going to call it Daredevil. He says, no, I'll do my own work. You know, if you got a friend who's super a superhero... And you're not feeling well, why not? Why not call them in to help you? Or ask her, like, I am I am sick. 
You don't think Daredevil Daredevil calls on you know friends if he needs it? Plus, yeah. this the book the sales will double if you have a guest star that right. helps you. A cool guest star. Yeah, Daredevil is he and Captain America are my two favorite Marvel superheroes. Hmm. Spidey isn't even in the running, although I like Spider Man. Yeah, I don't know who my yeah I like Daredevil. Um, yeah you know, I like them all I guess. Yeah. Now there's some that are lame. Yeah. Oh, Tomb of Dracula advertisement and the power of Warlock. Yeah, we we did some issues of Tomb of Dracula and and also uh, talked about Adam Warlock for a couple episodes. This I should say, uh, you, now that the cat's out of the bag, uh, this is this is Amazing Spider-Man number forty-eight, but it's reprinted in an issue of Marvel Tales. So this is a house ads from several years after this story okay. originally took mm -hmm. place. So context. All right, and cool. All right, so Spider-Man goes after the. Vulture 2. Or yeah. Like, or Vulture, Vulture Jr. I don't know. <laughs> the new Vulture. Yeah, and Spidey is having trouble. And it's yeah, because he's cool. sick. He's got like the like a, a virus. Yeah, he's really bad off. And it's affecting his ability to fight. And he was talking about earlier how cold it was being in the Spidey suit. And yeah. You know, yeah. So I, I think I'll stay home. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it'd be smarter if he had a thermal suit so it wouldn't be so bad in the summertime and he'd stay warm when in the wintertime. All right. Like a McDill McDLT. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we see, um, let's see, Mary Jane. She's fetching. Yeah, she looks nice. And uh, Aunt May and Anna Watson show up at Peter, Peter and Harry's apartment to uh, cheer up Peter or see him because he's sick. Mm -hmm. And, uh-oh, but Peter's out fighting the vulture and he's gonna have to sneak in the window later you know yeah all right a cool fight um i'm not gonna go into detail because you know it's what... just fighting it's good pretty nice pretty nice i think giving the play-by-play -play of these fights kind of ruins the fun of going and actually reading them mm -hmm. but yeah how does the story or this issue end rather oh um with the vulture has spidey on the ropes um spider-man is out out cold on a rooftop in the snow uh, next week we will have the next issue, so yay. we'll yay! Uh, so we'll have the next part of that. Or the week after? No, next week, or unless we don't have. Uh, um, okay, it's going to be two episodes from now. Well, three because I'm going to record, or four because I'm going to record with Spencer oh, later yeah, the week yeah. too. Okay, it'll be next week an episode that we talk about. Oh, okay. okay, all right, all right. So, so but that's it for this episode. Yeah, we'll see you in the funny pages.